Mistress of All Evil, A Tale of the Dark Fairy by Serena Valentino Copyright 2009, Disney Enterprises Incorporated, published by Disney Press Chapter 20, The Dark Fairy's Birthday The morning of the fairy exams, Maleficent woke to find that Diablo still hadn't come home. He wasn't on his perch waiting for her, like she had hoped. She tried to banish all the negative thoughts plaguing her mind. She needed to focus on her exam but she found herself distracted. Maleficent was convinced something horrible had happened to Diablo. She called for one of her favorite crows. Opal, my pet, will you go see if you can find Diablo? I'm worried about him. Opal gave a soft caw and flew off out the window. Maleficent watched her as she circled over the fairylands. She knew if anyone could find Diablo, it was Opal. For a brief moment, she could see what Opal saw. As she headed towards the thick woodlands, Maleficent had come to realize it was her fondness for Opal that allowed her to see through her eyes. She still needed to practice to see clearly through her pet's eyes, though. Rather than experiencing the flashing images she was seeing now, she looked around yawning. She felt a little better knowing Opal was out looking for Diablo, and she loved waking up in her treehouse. The view of the fairylands was beautiful from up here, and she wondered what it would be like to live life from that vantage point. Perhaps one day she would know. Maleficent, come down and have your breakfast. You're going to be late for the exams, Nanny said from the doorway, startling the girl. How long have you been standing there? Maleficent asked. Nanny gave her a sad smile. Long enough to know Diablo hasn't come home. Not to worry, my sweet. He is safe. I can feel him in the world. I'm sure Opal will find him. Trust me. Nanny and Maleficent went down to the kitchen. Nanny had been up all night baking various pastries, which she'd arranged beautifully on pretty flower-printed plates. Are we having guests for breakfast as well? Maleficent asked. Nanny looked up from the pot of tea she was making. What? No. Why do you ask that? You've baked so much. Maleficent's yellow eyes were wide but happy. Her long black hair was wild, as it often was when she first woke, and Nanny thought her horns were beautiful. They seemed to have finally stopped growing less than a year earlier and were a lovely deep shade of gray, which complemented her yellow eyes, and Nanny had noticed Maleficent's skin was a very light shade of lavender. That meant she was either happy or worried, maybe both. Nanny realized years before that her daughter's skin tone changed, depending on her mood. At least today she wasn't green, which would have indicated she was either angry or extremely sad. Green was a color Nanny hadn't seen on Maleficent in quite a while. Nanny blinked a few times, taking in her daughter's beauty, before she realized Maleficent was waiting for a reply. Ah, oh, yes, you know I bake when I'm nervous. Now, eat something before you have to get ready for your exams. Nanny was definitely more nervous than Maleficent. Not only was the table filled with artfully decorated pastries and little cakes, but she'd also made an assortment of preserves and clotted creams and a lovely lemon curd. Those sat beside bowls filled with fresh fruit. Does nothing in the table look good? Would you like me to make you some porridge? No, Nanny, I'm fine. Everything looks beautiful. Sit down and have some breakfast with me. Maleficent gestured to the chair next to her. Nanny shook her head. I can't, my dear. No time. Now eat. Maleficent grabbed a large chocolate chip scone, broke off a piece, and covered it with clotted cream. Try the cinnamon berry preserves, my dear. And the maple butter. I made those just for you. Nanny insisted. Maleficent had intended to try them. The maple butter was her favorite. I thought you would like that, my dear. Now hurry up and finish. You'd better go get ready soon. Nanny stopped fussing for a minute and looked at her daughter. My dear one, I almost forgot. Open the package on the table. It's a gift for your birthday. Maleficent smiled as she tore open the brown paper. Inside the parcel was a set of beautiful black robes, edged in silver and embroidered with silver ravens and crows. She'd never seen anything more beautiful. Thank you, Nanny. Maleficent flew into her mother's arms and kissed her on the cheek. My darling, do you know how beautiful you are? Nanny asked. Maleficent's pale cheeks turned pink. So Nanny changed the subject. I know you're going to do well today. I just know it. And if you will forgive the suggestion, you know I love you just as you are. It's just that... Maleficent stopped Nanny before she could continue. I've already planned to cover my horns. Not for me, mind you. Just so there's no reason for my sister to give you grief. 
I know. Nanny patted Maleficent on the cheek and gave her a light kiss. You know, I think your horns are beautiful. I know you do. Maleficent flashed her mother a radiant smile, returning the kiss with another. Thank you, mother. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to keep up to date on all the new magic. Have a magical day.